Man, that's a lot of knives. Yeah, I think I got everything in there. Okay. <laughs> hey everybody, this is Brian from Carving is Fun. And today, I went kind of overboard and purchased a lot of different whittling knives. I, I think I went and purchased about $600 in knives. That's what it's, I think I did. Oh man, that, that's a lot of money. Um, but I wanted, the, the purpose of it was I wanted to try and find out what was the best whittling knives specifically for like people getting into, uh, whittling and also, um, people on a budget. So like under $30 per knife. Now I, I know some of you probably are seeing some of these other knives on here, like some of the buck knives, like the, I think this is a 301 and even the the flex cut whittling jack they are 30 more than 30 dollars on their own but they come with multiple knives so i'm kind of putting them in here because like this this may be like a 50 dollar knife but if it has two knives in there so it's it's i'm kind of like letting it slide a little bit so it, um it's 25 dollars per knife if you purchase it for 50 bucks that's the way I'm seeing it right now, so just, just bear with me. I'm just, I, I had a little bit too much fun and bought a lot of crap. But l l let's get started in here. So uh, if you're just starting getting whittling and you getting into whittling and you want to figure out what you want to buy, um, there's a lot of different brands out there. And trust me, I went and found a lot of them and tested them out because I, I was in the same boat. I was like, okay, well, all these companies say that they're really good, but how good are they um let's let's start off with like the the main ones that a lot of people will see flex cut is going to be one of your main uh companies you're gonna you're gonna see when you're going out to try and find um a whittling knife whether it be your beginner or you're trying to find a, a decent quality one uh these are great uh if you are just starting just look no further pick up a flex cut you will find it uh find that they will get the job done perfectly fine for what you're looking for they come razor sharp right out of the box uh, and they have nice high quality um it's high high carbon uh, spring steel i believe and i think their the rockwell hardness is between 59 and 60 and 61. um the ideal hardness level for any whittling knife is going to be between uh, 58 and 62. Any less than that, you're going to have uh, poor edge retention. So that means your your razor sharp edge is most likely going to um, start to get dull a lot faster than uh, a higher hardness rating. But but if you get a little bit too high, um, like beyond the 62 range, the blade starts becoming really brittle, and then it starts um, then you start getting the edge uh, chipped as you're going along. So it, it's like that fine balance in between where you're trying to get um, the right um, the right hardness. And I'll, just about every single one of these knives here will achieve that, um, that they are the right balance. So, um, but yeah, the flex cut knives are gonna be your first choice. And then you're gonna be looking at your um, Beavercraft ones. Now, Beavercraft is a little bit on the cheaper end of the spectrum for some of the knives, but um, they I feel like they use a little bit lower quality steel and more basic handle. Like if you're comparing it to one of the flex cut knives, um, you can kind of see like the flex cut handles are a little bit more finished. Um, they have a very similar edge cut on there, but there's also a difference in blade width. So the thinner blades are usually easier to whittle with. There's less, um, you don't have to put as much force on the back of the blade to push it through the wood. Um, but these two come in a large variety of different tools available to them. Um, the flex cuts even have like chisels for them. I, I have them around here somewhere, but I couldn't fit them in. Uh, but they have chisels, they have gouges and all that other uh, all these other really cool tools, but these two are going to be your main ones you're going to be looking for, like if you're looking on Amazon and whatnot. Uh, both great companies. Uh, if you if you are wanting a good kit and not have to worry about anything, grab FlexCut. You'll be fine. If you're looking more on a budget, 
Beavercraft will fit the bill just for you. Now, like some other ones that I found that I really liked was uh, o OCC uh, tools. These are really cool knives. I They come with the, a variety of different handles on them. They're nice and thin. There's a flat grind almost all the way back. Razor sharp edge right out of the box. And they just cut right through wood, no problem. These are probably my favorite uh, knives under 30 bucks. I think I got these ones between 23 and 25 dollars each. I have a couple more of these knives. Um, I just couldn't fit them up on here, but just like some of the other ones they come with in different styles like chip carving and um, like I have a detail knife here. I have my roughing knife somewhere else, but yeah, they come in different handle shapes, which I really, I really like that. Um, now one of the, some of the other ones that I found out there, um, they don't come razor sharp right out of the box or there's issues with them. Um, let's start off with like your super basic cheapo uh, knives. Like I, these three right here, is, it was kind of like a spoon carving uh, kit because it, it came with like a little hook knife kind of deal so you can uh, take off uh, remove some wood in, in, uh, in a concave shape but I got this entire kit with some other stuff in there it had like a rolling bag uh, leather shop and whatnot for 20 bucks I found that on eBay saying oh let's see how good $20 can be for your whittling knives uh, um, where to start steel quality is okay I, I would probably exp it, I couldn't find anything what actual steel it was but they 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 do retain the edge pretty well, but after that it started getting some issues. Like this one, let's do each knife individually. This knife, I literally had chips all up along the, the edge. I had to reshape this this uh, the cutting edge on this one because it just it wouldn't cut. I mean, it was chipped. It, it's like they made a bunch of these blades and threw them in a big box and they just smashed the crap out of each other. Um, and then this one. I don't even know if they sharpened it properly. Like right here, I had a flat edge. Like it didn't. They didn't sharpen this part right here, so it was flat and dull. And then up near the top, it looked like someone had smashed it up up against something. Like it it mushroomed out. So I had somewhat sharp edge here, but there and there was just like completely dull. So I had to go and reshape this cutting edge on on there. And then this guy. This hook knife, um, you can see how they kind of cut it here. It looked like they put it on a, a flat grinder. But in doing that, they didn't touch up the back side of the blade, so all the metal was kind of rolled over. So it wouldn't take any wood off whatsoever. It would basically just be rubbing up against the wood, not cutting it at all. It was the equivalent of a dull edge, essentially. It's just like, instead of a nice, sharp point, it just... It was rolled over like it, I'm this is exaggerating, but the edge was kind of like that, and I had to go and really work that out. I, me personally, I would not buy them again. Um, that I would just go ahead and put those off the side, which I'm gonna do right now. That way, I can make more room, and I'm gonna bring in these Mora knives. Uh, these are this one is more like a Sloyd knife. Um, it's a fixed blade knife, but it's very, very comfortable and very, very sturdy. Um, I found it very useful for trying to whittle uh, lar like medium to larger uh, whittling projects. Like doing this size of a wood block, it, it's not suited for this blade. You'll have much better luck trying to use one of the flex cut knives because for one, there is a thickness difference right there. You can see the the Mora, uh, this is the 120. It's almost, I'd say almost three times the thickness of your flex cut knife. Um, but still, this is a very sturdy blade. It's, this one, it's laminated carbon steel, so that means it has um, a high carbon core, but it has a softer laminated steel on the outside. It's pretty easy to sharpen. It's got a nice flat, uh, edge with no bevel to it 
Um, I found that I could carve like a canoe, like out of a piece of wood within 30 minutes. Very, very easy to do. And then there's a similar one, which is the Mora 122. It's just like the 120 with, that has the curved edge, but this one has a flat edge to it, which I found it pretty useful in a couple of situations. But if I were to pick the two, um, between the two, I'd probably pick the 120 just because the, the curved edge, it gave, it gave me a couple more options. And plus you still have a little bit of a flat edge right here. So it's before it goes on the, the curve. Um, yeah, I picked those guys up. Now they do come with like generic plastic sheaths to, to put them in. Um, you can put them on your belt and whatnot. They're, they're basic. The, the sheaths are longer than actual knives are themselves. Um, I think it's just because they have the other versions of it, like the 106. Yeah, the Mora 106 is a little bit longer, and it'll probably fit the sheath a little bit better. But great knives if you wanted to pick some of those up. Um, now going into some of the other ones I ran across. Um, these ones right here all required sharpening. Let's, let's move them up to the forefront so you can see them a little bit better. All right, so let's start off from left to right here. Uh, this is the Butts Carving Knife. It is a good knife. It is a comfortable handle to hold on to. It's nice, smooth, and round. Um, just the right size, uh, right shape for a comfortable grip. I love this little uh, nook right there where you can actually hold on to your knife. Um, and also when you're doing any sort of like paring cut or anything like that, you see how it's bumping into my thumb right there, this little part right there. So it's less likely to bump into your, your finger um, or the blades less likely to hit your finger like you might experience with like the flex cut. Like if you're coming in, there's a chance you might hit your, your finger right there. This one helps prevent that from happening. Great for paring cuts, good for beginners. Um, you do have to sharpen this knife. Now when you purchase it in the descriptions, all the ones that I've seen, they say, hey, you need to sharpen this knife. And some of them will even give you directions like on, uh, oh, who is a good one, I think? Oh, Woodcraft, yeah. They, they actually have sharpening directions where you can go uh, follow your directions on how to sharpen the knife. Um, but for 20 bucks, this is a good knife. I really like it. Good quality German steel. Don't ask me to pronounce it. I, I can't do it. I, I did it in the review video. I'm pretty sure I butchered it, uh, butchered, butchered it right there. Um, but yeah, good knife. I, I like this one. Fell, I was disappointed in these knives. Uh, I've used this company's chisels and whatnot before for regular wood cutting stuff great great tools but man these these came to me dull both of them from different places ordered from different places at different times and just for the price that i paid for them i was not satisfied i was quite disappointed in my purchase like the the chip carving knife i think was 19 bucks it was dull it, it had a very very rough grind on it it the the number one uh knife that they had this required substantial work to it. Like there were dips in the metal. Like it, it, imagine like you had a, like this, like this is your, your cutting edge right there. This is straight. Imagine it going like this and then it dips down a little bit here and then dips down a little bit there. That, that was my cutting edge on here. It was not flat and straight. I had to literally grind down this side right here and then fix the cutting edge because it, it, I couldn't create an edge on a couple of points there. It was, I mean, I paid $28 for this before shipping. That, that is unacceptable. If I am getting a unsharp knife with a very, very rough grind on it, and I have to go and reshape the entire freaking blade on it. Um, plus I just was not, I was not happy with the finish of the handle. It's, like these edges right here, they're kind of they they kind of jam up into your finger. I and I had one side over here where it was just it was just bad. Like it, it was literally cutting into my hand. I had to go and shave it down. This knife 
was overall to me, it felt like a waste of money. I would not buy this gun, knife again, uh, from these knives from this company ever again. It just, no, there's so much better knives out there that are cheaper, like FlexCut. Just, like I said, buy their stuff, or even OCC. I really, really like the, that company right now. And then uh, this one's is R. Murphy. Just like all the other ones uh, that I just did here are like the butts and the fell knife. I had to go and sharpen it. Noted this one was only like a $13 knife. Uh, but let me just look at the handle is almost the same between a $28 knife and a $13 knife. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, you can po possibly see why I was disappointed in this one when I picked this one up for as cheap as I did. Um, noted, this one had some serious finishing issues on it that I am I don't like, but under understood that it is a possibility to have with a thirteen dollar knife. I mean. It's a cheap knife, let's put it that way. This is a cheap knife, the R. Murphy uh, handcrafting knife. If you are on an extreme budget, sure, you can do that, but just grab a beaver craft instead. Same price, higher quality. Comes sharper right out of the box. Don't even bother with this R. Murphy one at all. Just seriously, don't do it. When you can get this one at the same price on like Amazon, just it, it's a no-brainer. Don't even don't even bother with this one. Seriously, just don't don't do it. So let's let's do some of the the folding knives here, and then we'll get into like razor blades and whatnot, because that those are also a viable option. All right, so I I got a couple like your your general like multi or, like your pocket knives that most people have, um, and also I have like specialized whittling knives right here so ones that I saw a lot when I was looking around for a good whittling knife were the old timer knives these are affordable let's put it that way this one I think this is the workmate um, it's it has decent quality steel and a decent edge retention plus it's nice the blades are nice and thin and it's easy to open and whatnot. Plus, with all the different uh, varieties of blades that you get out of it, um, you get a pretty good selection for how you want to cut. There's a good one in here that I really like. This one. Great detail knife. I mean, the only problem is this is a pretty dinky knife for me. I, like, I don't like small knives like that, with uh, without a, especially without a locking mechanism. I feel like it would come back on my hand a little bit more which is always a uh, something you have to keep in mind when using these kind of knives now old timer also has this funky uh an all-in-one wood carving pocket knife you get your your blade in there you have some curved blades let's see if i can get it out oh right here i get this one this is like a gouge a straight gouge you can uh, I think this is a regular gouge scorp. Um, I got a V-scorp in there too. Pull you out. There you go. I got a V-scorp. And then you got your like rounded, almost like spoon carving knives and whatnot. Both of these are pretty cheap. I think they're both less than $20 each. Um, but again, it's like their, fi their final build quality on them were, was lacking. I had to actually modify this one. You might be able to see how tight this bottom side is up against the the knife. Like this this knife right here was actually impacting the inside of the of the um, actual metal here. Like it, it's bowed inwards to the point where I had to actually take another knife and cut away some of the metal that was in there. I mean, for a $17 knife, I'm, I'm okay with all that. Um, I might be spoiled because I carry l nicer knives with me all the time, so I, I just didn't like that. Um, and then this this guy, the, 
I think it's the Splinter, the Old Timer Splinter. Um, the steel quality is poor. I was not impressed with the steel quality at all. Like, and uh, like, what gave it away first is this knife. I I had to put a new edge on it. It was not suited for cutting. It was more like a like a wedge. Uh, it wouldn't even cut. It wouldn't even cut through basswood properly. But I I angled the the cutting edge back a little bit. But it's such a soft steel. It's like general purpose steel is what it feels like, and it. It does not hold the edge as well as I want. Plus, it's it's like it, this thing flexes, um, and I I didn't like that. It wasn't a very sturdy tool to begin with. Um, I I personally would not bother with those. I am a pretty big fan of buck knives. They make pretty dang good quality knives for like general purpose uh, pocket knives. Use them for whittling all you want. Um, now, when if you're picking up a buck knife or if you have them, you have to understand that they sell different quality steel. The 301 is uh, 440 high carbon steel. It's much more durable blade, um, higher edge retention. The uh, 373 has, I think it's 440 or 420 J tube, which is like their general purpose steel. This one, you will find that you will lose your edge much faster. Just keep that in mind when you're doing it. Do, do proper research on what steel you're buying if you're buying any sort of uh, knife uh, from, from Buck. I, I like them. The only thing that I'm not too terribly fond of for whittling is that they do have a pretty thick blade on them. Again, we're going to compare it to FlexCut just because. Like, you can see there's, there's a pretty substantial blade thickness there, uh, blade thickness difference. Will it work? Of course you can whittle with these things. I've done it before. I mean, as a kid, these were the knives that I carried with me. You just have to remember that it's like you got to keep them sharp and, and whatnot. Now, when using these, a little tip for you guys, if you're using these knives with multiple knives in them, uh, go ahead and like designate one of the knives just for whittling. That way you have a knife that's always sharp and ready to go. Um, Alright, Swiss Army Knife, everyone knows them, everyone loves them, they're, they're good knives. Um, they're a little bit on the softer side for the steel, but like for this one with the camper, um, I picked this one specifically because it has two different sized knives. The smaller one primarily is what I was looking for. Uh, great for whittling. You can, you can do a lot of stuff with the Swiss Army Knife. Always a good option. If this is what you have and you want to whittle with, with it, do it all day long. Great knife. Of course, there's like little knockoffs for the Swiss Army Knives. They will work too. I like them. I have them. Don't worry about it. These are the ones that I carry with me every day. Like literally every day. I don't leave home without them. I've been carrying both of these, I think, for nearly 10, 10 years each now. Definitely not designated whittling knives. These are my everyday knives. Can I whittle with them? Yeah, of course. This Leatherman Charge right here, one of the reasons why I got this knife specifically um, I did a bunch of research because I wanted a, a blade with a little bit more edge retention. This one has a 154 cm steel um, on it, so it it's a more durable blade than your standard like general purpose stainless steel uh, knife, which is the the rest of these knives are the like general purpose stainless steel. But I got it specifically for this one. This does make a decent whittling knife, but again, it is also thicker and the angle of the edge is not very well suited for for whittling. But still, I whittled with both of those to great success. A great, great choices. Now, going into more what I would consider specialized, more for whittling itself, um, we have the Flex Cut Whittling Jack. Great, great knife. And then your OpenL uh, Carbon uh, steel knives which for the price of this knife you this it's absurd value this is like the best value knife that I probably own in this entire set Th this is no exaggeration I am so impressed with this open L knife right now um, this one is the number seven um, knife it is carbon steel it may be on the lower end of the uh, hardness with like I think it was 
57 to 59. It's still within range, but it's got a really nice and thin blade. Um, and this is the part that I love the most. This is a twist lock safety on it. So I just take and rotate this little collar, like right here. I rotate it around and it it holds the blade in place. Like this blade now feels like it is a fixed blade knife. Like there is no movement to this blade at all. And with the comfortable handle, oh man, it just, I'm just gonna, like, it just, it goes right through through wood. It's it's a good, good knife for, um, and I carry this one with me all the time for now that's my primary whittling knife. Like this is, if I'm out and about, this is my whittling knife. I take it with me. It is very nice and high quality and it comes to you razor sharp out of the box and it's so simple. I think I paid 15 bucks for this thing. 15 bucks. Now the other thing about the, the locking blade or the locking mechanism, you can sort of make it child proof. So just rotate it a little bit and it locks the blade in place um, where you can't open the blade at all and it won't come open in your pocket. I like that. Like I keep mine in a sheath still, but that that is awesome. And then FlexCut Whittling Jack. They FlexCut makes several different versions of this. I personally like it because it has um, just two blades in it. It's simple. You got your rough out knife in there, which is a two inch blade, and then it comes with a, a one and a half inch knife for more like detail work and whatnot. Now keep in mind, you saw me kind of struggling getting the blades out. This is stiff to open and close. Um, still, very good knife, but it also is more expensive. I can probably buy three or four of these knives for the price of this knife. This one was can range between $45 to $60. Still, great quality knife. I like it. I am definitely keeping it, but just keep in mind that it is more expensive. And then last but not least, you can whittle with like your razor blades, exacto knives, utility knives and whatnot. Like I I personally don't like it. Um, for a couple of reasons. Let's start with the X-Acto knife. Um, well, yeah, there's a reason right there. I guess I didn't have the locking collar all the way down. I don't like knives that can come loose like that. I mean, that's, to me, a safety hazard. I like my knives kind of like fixed in place where I know this is not going to come out. Interchangeable blades are cool and all. That way you don't have to sharpen them. But you still have to worry about them coming loose and over time like even this one I you can see on there I chipped the the tip of it, it no longer has a super sharp tip um, they're kind of brittle and and can just break on you which is also another thing I'm not liking I've heard people injuring themselves by using these kind of knives for whittling um, if you're a beginner I do not recommend either one of these knives pick up a flex cut just do it seriously way better. Just just don't don't argue with me. Just go ahead and buy it. But also even with this one you can see it it rattles around a little bit. And the quick uh, quick swap out ones, it's cool. You don't have to sharpen the blades, but again, it's not as secure as I like. And also other thing too is like when you're whittling, you have this huge chunk right there. So you're more limited to like how much you can get get into with your, your razor blade uh, with, with the utility style knives. And these, I mean, you can use these for chip carving. Let's, let's say that. You can use them for chip carving or like adding details, like you're cutting like a pin and whatnot. That's a great option too. If you're a beginner, I would definitely recommend picking up an actual designated whittling knife. Preferably one that does not come dull, like this one over here. Don't don't get this company, don't get Phil. Um, OCC, FlexCut, and Beavercraft. Like, if you want... If you want a good quality whittling knife right off the bat, three my three choices, like I said, for affordability, Beavercraft. 
you can't beat their price in for what you get. This is what you want to get. Uh, for general all around, flex cut. You, you can't go wrong with them. Um, OCC tools, great company. These are rapidly becoming my favorite uh, whittling knives. Uh, you can get them, I think, Treeline USA and uh, several other companies too I found, but Treeline USA is usually my very first stop. Um, but yeah, these are my, my, my favorite knives. These are a little bit more expensive than the Plex cuts on average, but to me, very much well worth it. Um, if you are doing more larger scale whittling, the, the Mora 120 will be your uh, go-to one. I would suggest getting this and if you're just doing like general wood carving, just need a good shop knife or if you're just going to be out and about camping and like larging, uh, whittling large sticks, grab this guy. You will be very happy with it. For like your general pocket knives, these, all these knives are great. All these knives are great. I I find them useful in their own regards. So we'll accept that one. I don't like it. <laughs> if you're gonna get, if you want to get spoon carving tools, go get speci uh, specialized spoon carving tools that are like individual. You you'll get more value out of them than this thing. I, this to me is useless. Um, but yeah, like Buck makes good knives. If you have a Buck knife, use it. Um, just use. Use uh, good judgment in your knives, but these are my three knives that I would pick for uh, whittling with. Like if you if you had to choose like a folding knife, your Swiss Army knives go to for anyone. These are excellent knives. Um, for me, I like the the camper version because it has the like two different. Oh, that's not it. Where you at? So there's the main knife and the small knife. It, because it comes with two different sizes knives, so you can have this one for like your general purpose knife and keep the smaller one for your whittling knife. I would recommend doing that. Um, if you just want like a regular single blade knife, open L carbon steel knife all the way. Uh, don't go, make sure it's the carbon version because um, it is a, a more, a harder steel. It's going to maintain its edge for a lot longer. But yeah, definitely highly recommend this knife. And then if you want like a specialized whittling knife that is designed for whittling, but it is also portable, the FlexCut Whittling Jack is my ideal choice. Because um, for me, I won't need more than two knives for what, I'm, what I am personally going to do. They sell other ones with more knives than them. Uh, they're a bit thicker. They have more... Um, different types of tools, but they're also more expensive. This is just like, this is the sweet spot for me right here. But definitely grab that one uh, if you're going to be doing, willing on the go. I mean, but still for 15 bucks, the Open uh number seven carbon steel folding knife. This is, th this is one of my favorites. For most of these knives up here, I did an individual re review for them. Um, so if you want to go ahead and check those out, go right ahead. I also have um, other stuff in here, like I, I show you how to whittle various things, or you can just join me in my adventures of whittling and some of my nonsense in there as well. Um, but yeah, feel free to like and subscribe. I got a lot more on the channel. Uh, thank you for watching, everybody, and I hope you have yourselves a great day.